Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at you, savings coming at you. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance. Which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company, affiliates, and other insurers. Discount not available in all stages or situations. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Pair of Truth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And now we're broadcasting at you live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Blog Talk Radio. So how's the week been for you, sir? Uh, it's been all right. A little crazy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly with all this research. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, for everybody who has not seen our uh, Twitter posts and our Facebook posts, we are doing Alien Theory today, uh, maybe continuing on into our next episode, which is, this is going to be two-parter, Alien Theory and UFOs and Alien Abductions, which I think those two pair together pretty well, so. Yeah, I agree. So, um, we are going to have two really great shows we've got a lot of information to cover um we also will be having a couple of guests on that we have had on our other shows so this is going to be phenomenal um so throughout your research here um what kind of commonalities did you find in the different alien theories hmm you mean besides the obvious well, yeah, like <laughs> they all come from outer space, right? Like for the Christian standpoint on things, where do things kind of connect for you? Well, <clears throat> I have to say mostly uh, in regards to the UFOs as opposed to the aliens themselves. Um, there's a lot of similarities as a uh, through different cultures as to what a UFO looks like. Yeah. Um, Minus the description within the Bible, which, you know, we'll get into that later in the show or next week or something, I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, I think most most things I've seen, they, they've always or read, they've always uh, described a UFO as a flying saucer, a disc-shaped thing or something shaped like a wheel, you know, something more or less round right? Uh, in structure as opposed to something very uh, – uh, detailed and curvy and so on and so forth as we see in most uh movies and books nowadays you know mm -hmm. um another thing that i did notice in regard to aliens is the commonality in the way an alien looks the big eyes the big head uh the small mouth the weird nose type thing <laughs> yeah uh you know that's been really common too and you know, a lot of the information that we find is based off of just, you know, texts and drawings and stuff like that uh, that are found in a number of different places, whether they're caves or uh, on different uh, papers that have been found, mm -hmm. uh, you know, around the world. Um, but besides that, I mean, there's no – I haven't found anything that gives any true credit to the existence of extraterrestrial beings or the UFOs that they claim to have come in. Yeah. Well, um, I do want to touch really fast, guys, which we forgot to do again at the beginning of the episode, and we did last week. We do have a call-in number. We would love to hear your thoughts on things. Um, our call-in number is 914-205-5558. Uh, we do have our chat room open. If you are uncomfortable with calling in, we will be more than happy to answer your questions in chat as well. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. And you can email us at paratruthradio at gmail.com. If there's ever any questions you guys have prior to, during, or after shows, 
any type of guests you'd like to have have us uh, touch on or subjects you would like for us to touch on, please interact with us. We love to hear feedback from everybody. Um, so if you have any theories whatsoever on extraterrestrials, UFOs, we would love to hear your input. All right. So throughout history, as far as we see, there have been texts, there have been pictures drawn. There have been people claiming to have been abducted. Uh, there have been people saying they've seen UFOs. As Eric said, the most commonality with UFOs is a cir circular object in the sky. And it has varied a little bit through different people's uh, viewpoints and um, things that they've seen. But in all commonality, it's a circular object in the sky. Most people that have said that they've been abducted have been abducted by what they call the greys in um, paranormal society. The greys are the tall or sometimes shorter aliens that have a grayish tint to their skin, very big black eyes, little to no mouth or nose or ears of any kind. And that kind of followed into the reptilians as well. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. Um, um, the one thing I did notice, is, you know, they're still very humanoid, both of them, even the reptilians. I mean, yeah. uh, they're, they're, as far as I know, they're not depicted as having long snouts um, like you would figure a reptile to have. Right, yeah. Um, they do have a tail. In some cultures, yeah, which is a little weird, but I guess that's it. I was just thinking about it. that's another commonality I found is just the humanoid aspect of these so-called aliens that live outside our world. Right, and I guess that could be understandable because, like, even if extraterrestrials don't exist, we attribute things to our own anatomy and our own culture. So we, if we were coming across a intelligent life form we would think that that that's what they would look like or act like is human humanoid type behavior mm -hmm. so the reptilians are a little bit more of a controversial type of extraterrestrial that has been talked about a lot of people believe that Reptilians are actually a part of our government trying to take over human society, <laughs> and uh, they shape themselves to look like us, but that – even extraterrestrials can be far-fetched of a subject. Reptilians trying to take over the world, which is not necessarily impossible <laughs> – <laughs> We have dinosaurs still lives. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. For the reptilians, it's hard for me to envision things a little more than with gray aliens. What do you think? Uh, I agree. The grays are the most common style of alien. You see those in books and television shows and movies and, you know, you name it. Uh, the reptilians are kind of a more underground type of form, I think. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to being known on the world basis, uh, they're just not really that popular, you know? Um, what I do find funny, though, in, in regards to the reptilians, <laughs> and it's kind of just random and out there, uh, it's kind of funny how similar in a way the word is to Republicans. <laughs> 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 and, I mean... I'm all for Republicans, but it's just kind of weird that they would, you know, someone would be like, oh, there's reptilian aliens, and they just happen to be in the government. Right. You know, it's just kind of weird uh, the way they try to splice words together and, you know, try to show cover-ups and this and that. Uh, another thing that I noticed in regards to, <laughs> to reptilians, I didn't look any videos up, mostly because I knew they were probably all just ridiculous. Um, but there are countless videos and images out there uh, on the Internet showing these reptilians supposedly – accidentally revealing their true selves, yeah. you know, coming out of their human form. Uh, I, I've never seen them, but I can only imagine how ridiculous it probably looks when you watch them. 
But, you know, regardless, it's just amazing how many people, uh, no matter how fake something looks or appears to be, they believe it anyway, you know? Yeah, and, like, through the research on the reptilians, which wasn't very much because it is a very non-common uh, subject for UFOologists and alien theory that, like, they listed two people uh, to be in reptilian, actually three people to be in reptilian form um, that we would know of, which is Barack Obama, George Bush, number two, and Queen Elizabeth of England. I... I can understand how people could feel that way because of a lot of Democrats, Republicans, any type of government uh, entity kind of changes after they come into office compared to what they promised Mm -hmm. time. So for them to attribute them being extraterrestrial in nature isn't very far-fetched, but... I honestly don't believe reptilians, even if they do exist, are trying to take over our government and our our world society. <laughs> I, so, on the other hand, think it's very far fetched. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some, one of the most ridiculous things I think I've ever heard. But I'm a firm believer that anything <sighs> can happen, but it's very improbable that it is happening. <laughs> So I kind of tend to gravitate toward the gray alien theory and a lot of research that I did through ancient aliens, ancient astronauts kind of depict that style of of aliens is the the grays and even in the gray alien research it says that there were extraterrestrials that came to Earth calling themselves the Nords or the Norse gods. Mm -hmm. For them to come as godlike beings, whether they intended to or not intended to influence human existence through that form, it is possible, I believe, very much so. Mm -hmm. So... From an aspect of Christianity, and there was several mentions of text in the Bible of otherworldly beings, whether that be it was extraterrestrials, which humans thought were um, otherworldly creatures like angels and demons, or the fact that it was angels and demons that, like through the Nephilim, Mm-hmm. Is um, what what is your perception on it? Like as far as extraterrestrials influencing uh, religious beliefs? Well, <clears throat> you know, for, first of all, before I answer that question, I give everyone a definition of extraterrestrial because I, mean, I, don't, I don't know about anyone else out there. I always had an idea what extraterrestrials were, obviously aliens, but I never knew the actual definition that the dictionary gives it. And it's simply an outside or originating outside the limits of Earth. So basically anything that's outside the limits of the Earth's atmosphere is considered alien or extraterrestrial. Um, and that would include any planet, any debris, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in my view, God is outside of our limits, you know, of the atmosphere. He is in the atmosphere, but he's also beyond it. Mm. Um, you know, and, and God or the Bible constantly talks about rising in a heaven and God being in the, you know, in the third heaven or above the stars. Um, and, and in theology, you figure there's three atmospheres. You have the atmosphere of the earth, then you have space, which is the angel's abode, so the stars and the planets, so on and so forth. And then the third heaven is um, God's throne, mm-hmm. where it's bright and it's white and it goes on forever and ever and ever. Um, and of course, looking at it from here, you look up into space, there's no way you're going to ever see, you know, all you see is darkness. So to think that the throne is up there, it's just hard to believe, but, you know, that's what the Bible calls you to faith, you know, to believe in such a thing. Um, but in regards to the UFOs, uh, especially, uh, many people have brought this theory 
in the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter one in particular, uh, Ezekiel writes about God coming to him one day. And it says that Ezekiel sees an immense cloud that contains fire and is emitting lightning and bright light. Um, it goes on to continue that uh, the center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and it looked like the f- uh, the fire uh, looked like four living uh, creatures. And each of these creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning, and the fire moved back and forth among the creatures. Uh, on top of that, he saw four shiny objects appearing like wheels intersecting a wheel. That's basically, I don't know how else to explain it, a wheel is <laughs> intersecting a wheel. Um, but and with, another thing that's interesting is he continued writing and said, when the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them moved. And when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Uh, and many people have taken this to believe that this was just a UFO of some sort and Ezekiel didn't have any other way to explain it. Um, but, you know, a lot of theologists out there uh, and other Christians don't believe this is uh, a description of a UFO, perhaps. I mean, it might be a description of something he'd never seen before. And the only way to describe it was to put it in words that he knew at the time, uh, which were words like metal and fire and uh, wheels and so on and so forth. Uh, we know that I mean, in theology, we know the the number of different angels uh, that have different different uh, numbers of wings. Uh, the seraphim, in particular, have six wings: two which cover their face, two which they fly with, and two that cover their feet. And uh, those wings actually actually represent their humility towards God. And it's believed that God had come down on these angels because the seraphim, which actually is a, uh, it's actually derived from a Hebrew term, which means the burning ones, because the seraphim are always in the presence of God. And to be that close to God, it's as if they're burning due to his light and his, you know, that he you know, provides. Um, that you, you can go on and on and on arguing about what this description really means in Ezekiel. Uh, you know, when I say that it's simply God coming down in angels, you know, that's what I believe, and that's what I see when I read this scripture. But other people are always going to see some kind of UFO-style, you know, spaceship or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I guess you got to think, uh, similarly, when we see, uh, like, a satellite flying through the sky. Now, it's dim, but it looks as if there's a fireball flying by. Right. And we all know that in reality, it's not a fireball. It's the sun... Uh, glowing off of the metal that is on the satellite. Mm. But in the terms for everyone to understand, we just say, oh, it's a fireball. You know, it looks like a fireball or whatever. Um, So Ezekiel's a tough one, though. I'll be honest. It's a tough one. And many Christians even are up in the air about it. And, you know, the truth is, if you believe it was some kind of UFO, that's fine. As long as it doesn't hinder your faith in who God is. Right. Now, it's completely different if you say, well, all right, it's a UFO. But God who came down in it is an alien from another planet. Well, then you're just kind of throwing out the, the scripture. You know, you're throwing out everything that the scripture stands for and you're throwing out the faith. All right. Well, before we take our first break, could, in your opinion, would it be more likely that if that description is supposed to be a UFO, that these extraterrestrials were coming down and saying they were gods or angels or demons and trying to portray portray themselves that way um you know i would say i can say that it is a possibility and to be honest um but you know i know you want to take a break so let's get back to that after our break because i could go on with that okay (laughs) all right folks we are going to take a quick break with eric random fact of the day as well as a song by adrian west called every mile so we will be right back in just a few minutes now, Eric Brandom Facts of the Day. Many strange things have been documented throughout history, but one of the most common is the activity in the Bermuda Triangle. On December 5, 1945, five military planes flew out over the Bermuda for a training exercise. However, after flying nearly 225 miles, the planes vanished from radar 
and the crew and planes were never found. Did you know that there is another triangle known as the Dragon's Triangle? Located 100 kilometers south of Tokyo, it too is a hotspot for plane and boat disappearances. What's more odd, if you were to draw a straight line from the center of the Dragon's Triangle, it would connect to the center of the Bermuda Triangle, causing some to believe the triangles to be a wormhole.
right, folks, welcome back. You're listening to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, as we said at the beginning of the show, if you guys are just tuning in, we do have a guest call in line, 914-205-5558. We have our chat room open. And uh, if you guys have any questions or any thoughts, go ahead and give us a call or in our chat. You can also reach us on Facebook and Twitter and through Paratruth, paratruthradio at gmail.com. So before the break, we were just getting into Eric's interpretation of what if in the Bible the scripture is talking about extraterrestrials coming to Earth and they are posing as angels compared to a- actual angel or God connections to Ezekiel, Ezekiel's uh, interpretation in the Bible. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Um, but as I said before we went to break, everyone's going to have their own interpretation. Right. Is it possible that there was an alien of some sort that came down to pretend to be God? You know, one would say it's possible. Even I would say it's possible. But it really depends on how, not only the the version of the scripture you're, you're reading. Now, mind you, all versions of the, of the Holy Bible in particular – are very, very similar, minus a few words that are changed, but usually are very similar in context. Yeah. Um, this is something I want to point out very, like, right now that many people miss. When they read the account of Ezekiel's vision or what he saw, uh, they kind of skip over the first and second verses, the first, second, and third verses, I should say, of Ezekiel 1. And they go straight to Ezekiel uh, verse 4 which starts talking about the immense clouds and, you know, these creatures coming out from the heavens and they look like they have wings and wheels and so on and so forth. And, you know, people start doing everything they can because they don't want to believe in God. They want to believe in alien beings instead because for whatever reason, it's better to put your faith in that kind of thing. But I'm going to read this part right now. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. In my 13th year, in the fourth month of the fifth day, while I was among the exiles by the Kabar River, the heavens are open, and I saw visions, very important word, of God. Verse 2, on the fifth month of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of the king. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzai, by the Kabar River in the land of the Babylonians. There the hand of the Lord was on him. And verse 4, I looked and I saw a windstorm coming. Now, what's very important is this word of visions. It is very, very, very possible that Ezekiel didn't actually see a physical representation of God coming down, but instead he was in a sleep and God put visions in his head. Right. Yeah. So Ezekiel was a prophet. He was a priest. He was also a prophet. And a prophet is able to see visions that God gives him when he puts his hand on them. So this whole idea of burning coals and uh, the metal and the wheels and so on and so forth is just the way that God related a message to him to show him what the glory of God looked like. It didn't mean that it was God or that it was, you know, some other alien, but it was what God was able to, it was how I should say he was able to show himself without actually showing himself. Because quite frankly, if God were to appear to us in human form, we would probably die, to be honest. Uh, and that's according to the scriptures. He's just too mighty for us. He's too, too pure, too perfect, too bright. And our eyes would probably burn out of our head, basically, if he was, if he came near us. Um, Hence why he sent Jesus Christ to talk to us instead of himself well that's going in something different because jesus christ was himself he was god so you know you gotta be careful with that too um but in regards to this you know many people skip over this whole part of it being a vision you know or a dream in a sense um and we have dreams all the time you know in visions and, and we see things that we don't understand and most of the time it doesn't make sense and doesn't mean a thing anyway uh but this is just an example. Like, I really don't think Ezekiel was seeing a UFO by any means, and it sure as heck wasn't an alien coming down pretending to be God. It was God giving him a vision, and after he saw this stuff, God gave him words to speak to, you know, other cities. Um, from there, also talking about um, in regards to Christian aspect of aliens, there is a passage in Genesis six. Many people are aware of this. It's it's when uh, Noah comes into the picture, and of course, the great flood. Uh, chapter 6, 
verse one begins, when humans be, uh, when human, be- nah, sorry, when human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters are born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any one of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old men, men of renown. Um, And then God saw the wickedness of the human race and decided to destroy all humans. Uh, Many people want to believe that these sons of God were aliens that came down and uh, married the daughters and had children with them. And these children had become known as the Nephilim. And the Nephilim were, uh, are mentioned in the Bible as being giants, very strong, um, and basically capable of things that most humans wouldn't be able to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this term, sons of God, is, you know, that, it's... Some people have difficulty with it. You know, there's always debate on this whole Nephilim thing and who the sons of God really are. Yeah. But a good key is when you look at the book of Job, because in the book of Job, the sons of God are referring to angels. Right. And so here, many theologists will tell you that if they had to take a, you know, just a straight guess, Mm -hmm. the sons of God are angels, fallen angels or demons that decided to marry the daughters and then have children, and these children were half-angel, half-human breeds, uh, hence making them so much bigger and stronger than the rest of the population. Uh, and that particular theory there actually gets into the whole pyramids being built and stuff like that, which yeah. we'll get into that at some point down the line, I'm sure, maybe not, well, probably with the alien stuff, because there's a whole lot of uh, belief in regards to extraterrestrials helping there as well. Right, well, and that kind of falls into kind of all three of these because whether you believe or don't believe that extraterrestrials do exist or if you believe or don't believe that we've had visitors in our ancient history it is very possible am i saying is that that's what happened absolutely that's not what i'm saying and my own beliefs do not hinder the truth that we're trying to come to in in our show mm-hmm. um, and when i read the Bible, I do not think of extraterrestrials in any means, shape, or form. I would just love to hear your input on it, because there are a lot of Christians that have different viewpoints as far as what is in the Bible and how to interpret it. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's interesting to kind of hear your viewpoint seeing as you've gone through the training to to work in the church and everything like that. And now I don't really know a whole lot on the Christian viewpoint of it. I know Catholics, which is part of the Christian faith, have finally started saying that they believe that extraterrestrials exist. What do you think? Are, is it possible that we have other beings on other planets living and coming to see us? You know, that's that's something that's not touched in the Bible. You know, God never specifies. He only talks about right. yeah. us and earth. So any speculation you have outside of the Bible, do, I mean, do I believe aliens exist? Honestly, I don't know. I could say yes, I could say no, and I wouldn't be condemned for it. Um, <clears throat> put it this way, this is, something, this is something I actually heard from Jesse Marcel Jr. Uh, on my last radio show. Mm-hmm. I had the same conversation with him, and I asked him about extraterrestrials because obviously his book is about uh, UFOs, and his book's about the Roswell incident right. in 1947. Uh, and I asked him the same question: Do you believe aliens exist? And he's a Christian, and he said, "Well, <clears throat> I could say yes, they exist, but that could be lying and would go against, you know, whatever the scriptures say. But I could say no." but then that would put a limit to God's power. You know, so to think that aliens exist would be going beyond what God has told us and what we should really focus on, you know. But to say that they don't would be like, well, that means that God wasn't capable of creating them or decided not to for whatever reason, you know. Um, Now, mind you, 
the universe is vast. I mean, you can't reach the end of space. So what lives out there? I have no clue. I mean, there might be life uh, of some sort out there. Do I think that they're uh, these highly intelligent beings? Not necessarily. In fact, not at all, in my own personal opinion, because if they were, we would have seen some kind of uh, significant evidence by now. Um, And plus, in the very beginning, and if if you follow the Bible and you believe in it, in the beginning, God created man, and he said it was good. And the term good, when God uses it, means perfect. You know, it's right. what he wanted, which means in the beginning, we had it all. We were capable of, of capable of things when Adam and Eve were created, more so than we're capable of now. You know, a lot of people think that we're getting smarter these days, but we're not. We're actually getting dumber. Because yeah. in the beginning, Adam and Eve, they were the top. I mean, they lived 900 years plus, you know, thousands of years, some some people. Um and we can only imagine what great things they were capable of until the fall, until Satan came into the garden and tempted them, and they sinned. And then from there on, you can see throughout the Bible that life started to decrease. You know, you go from 900 years, 800 years, 700, so on and so forth, until now where we're at, what, 80 and lower, 60? Um, and, and to think, I don't know, like I guess a lot of people just unfortunately believe the whole worldly view that human beings came from apes. And we weren't capable of anything. We didn't know how to create fire and this and that. And so aliens had to come and teach us this stuff, which I don't believe is true at all. Because apes are a completely different yeah. uh, animal compared to what we are, you know, as mammals. So <clears throat> I'm not really a believer of an extraterrestrial intervention in human society or evolution or anything like that. Do I believe that it's a possibility they exist? Absolutely. It would be very a closed minded view to say that we are the only life on any planet to ever come out of the primordial soup, quote unquote. So I'm a firm believer that there are extraterrestrials out there, as you said, intelligent or not, there's it's very slim to believe that any type of intelligent race would want to intervene in the natural progression of any other race. And I am a firm believer of that, regardless of any belief in extraterrestrials that I would have as far as if I truly believe they do exist. Right. Um, We're going to take another quick break guys. We're down to about, roughly 20 minutes left of the show. If you have any questions or concerns, you do have the guest line open 914-205-5558. Our chat room is also open and uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, folks. Welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name's Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, that was Watery World by Adrian West. I want to thank Adrian for letting us use his music here on our show. Uh, if you have any interest in the music, which I think he has a great sound to him, uh, go to adrianwest.com. You can download his music there, check his bio, all that great stuff. Uh, we've been talking about extraterrestrials and alien theory here in um, – it's been an interesting <clears throat> look on things because there is so much more information that we're going to touch on, even with uh, UFOs and alien abductions, and we'll get more into those as far as uh, in-depth in the next episode. Um, and uh, Eric has had a guest on his previous show that got a little bit into alien abduction and how uh, I believe it was – was it exorcisms that he was doing to help people with alien abductions or no, it wasn't exorcisms. It was, uh, simply teaching them who Jesus Christ was and then having them call on the name of Christ, uh, in an effort to destroy whatever oppression that they had, a okay. uh, demonic oppression. Okay. So we'll get more into those conversations next episode because that's a whole other nutshell in itself <laughs> to the, the theory of extraterrestrials. Mhm. Yeah, that's, that's a deep one, and that's that's. <laughs> there's a lot of info there on both sides, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but definitely on the Christian aspect and the stuff that I've studied, there's a lot of info that I, and probably a lot of arguments I could bring up too. So. Well, <laughs> that, that's kind of the point of having both viewpoints. Is most people don't understand at least the completely faithful who are quote-unquote straying from faith but have are questioning things which is okay to question your faith obviously but to kind of further things in the christian beliefs as far as how things are read in the bible what most beliefs are even through the teachings that you've gone through in um all of your your Theology, yeah, yeah and all of that. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So, um, kind of to wrap things up a little bit, we're at 15 minutes here, guys. Um, I'm still thinking, even through all the research here, that even if aliens do exist, the Greys are more believable than the reptilians. Yes. More evil. More, more believable. So oh, believable. I think that you okay. Um, I would say yes, based on the amount of belief that they exist, (laughs) you know, the writings and the movies and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Now, um, to kind of touch on things, because like I said, you had talked to somebody about the alien abduction things, Mm -hmm. um, say aliens are actually just representations of what we believe as otherworldly beings as angels and uh, demons. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, if it was a representation of aliens and demons, but people trying to say, or I'm sorry, angels and demons, but people were trying to put it off of a religious aspect and saying they were aliens. Would you think that the gray aliens would be angels and reptilians would be the representation of demons? Or is it a little bit different as far as, Christianity's, I guess, not viewpoint, but a definition, if if it were something else. Um, so you're asking if, if like, the a- if, aliens weren't really aliens, would I depict them as angels or demons? Right. My answer would be demons, period, for both. Both of them? Uh, when you look at the research of both the Greys and the Reptilians, they're both bad on some side. Uh, they both deduct. They both do tests or whatever they do up there, uh, according to the stories and the number of people who claim to have been abducted. Uh, so in the end, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, they'd have to be demonic in all accounts on, on the side of the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. Um, angels are meant, not meant, but, they, you know, they help people. Yeah. And when God sends them, uh, they don't abduct people. They don't hurt people. They don't uh, purposely strike fear into people. If you read the Bible, anytime an angel shows up, people tremble. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they picture angels as these cute little babies in diapers or 
the, these fluffy wings and so on and so forth, which maybe they have fluffy wings, maybe they don't, I don't know. <laughs> but the truth is, the angels are warriors. They're big, they're strong, they're uh, ferocious. You know, they, they are meant to fight, you know, the war. Um, they're also meant to serve God. You know, a lot of people think they serve us, but they don't serve us. They serve God. Um, and they seem to serve us when God tells them to. Um, I would say more along the lines of help than serve. Correct. You know, they, they help us from time to time. Uh, and a lot of people think that angels help people, for, you know, f- willingly, you know, free will. But that's not the case. It's, God is the one who's always helping. He just sends his angels to do certain work, you know, throughout the world. Um, and, and in regards to demons, there is, I mean, we'll get into this next right. week, Yeah. but there are very, very, like a lot of similarities between demonic oppression, affliction, and possession, if you will, and alien abduction. Mm. Huge similarities between the two. And, uh, next week I think you'd be very surprised when I tell you all about that. Well, I, honestly, I don't think I'll be surprised, but it is going to be interesting to hear the the similarities because I honestly don't know those similarities. I have heard of demonic possession, dom- demonic oppression, oppression, and those kinds of things, but I don't know the similarities between mm-hmm. that and and uh, abduction, alien abduction, visitation, and so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. So, in any of the research that you've done. Going along the lines of people trying to explain angels and demons in a different way, did you come any, across any visits from extraterrestrials that would represent angel-type visits? No. No. Okay. Simple as that. <laughs> and I... Again, I don't know a whole lot about alien abduction compared to demonic possession oppression, so we will get into that more next episode. So, oh, uh, well, I mean, to remind you, I mean, this is the reason why, real quick here, you know, when we think of aliens, we always think of aliens as being bad. Yeah, I can't think of a single other than ET. I can't think of a right. single good alien, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and ET's got to be thrown out the door for this one. Yeah. Um. When angels help people, they appear as angels, you know. They're not, or or they might conceive themselves as uh, human beings or whatever they need to do that God tells them to do, you know, to fit in or to hide, uh, but still yeah. help out. Um, demons, on the other hand, they want to do anything and everything to drive your faith away from God. They they everything that they in their power, they're going to try to do their best to keep you from believing in the God of the Bible, the Lord, and. The best way to do that is to change their appearance and make you believe in something that doesn't really exist and put your faith in something that isn't really there. Hence the alien thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if they appear as demons all the time, you're going to say, oh, crap, the devil's real. Then I know God's real. and I'm going to turn to him to get rid of these demons. Yeah. And they already know that. You know, demons know that. And so they're going to do something that they've been working on for thousands of years and are very skilled at. And that's transforming themselves to become something else, and in this case, aliens, so that you're like, oh, well, these are actual physical beings, you know, coming from space. How can God help me here? There is no God because these aliens are attacking me and so on and so forth, and so they must just be aliens that exist, and they're the gods. Mm. And it's really amazing how Satan's – how he twists things and turns things to make you believe what he wants you to believe, even though it doesn't truly exist. In my own opinion. Right. Well, kind of to wrap things up, too, what's your opinion as far as the quote-unquote evidence that we've found through ancient texts and ancient uh, art and wall paintings and that sort of thing for the ancient astronauts or the ancient aliens? What do you think that can be attributed to? <sighs> um, you know, there's a couple of different theories. Your, your personal belief, not just on the Christian side. Right, my personal belief. Um, uh, again, there's still a number of different theories because I don't have one hundred, you know, a hundred percent theory on that. Right. Um, okay. Or you know, in as far as the what it, things look like and that sort of thing. Um, 
Well, in regards to the astronauts, um, in, in regards to the depiction of people, you know, that you see yeah. in the pictures that are or the writings on the walls and stuff like that, um, I don't know much of it shows these beings coming out of any spaceship-like thing. They just happen to show the, the being standing there. Yeah. Um, in the Bible, we see that angels can appear in the flesh. And Satan was an angel, so it's very possible that he, too, can appear in the flesh. He can look just like you and I. We could touch him just like you. You know, if I touch you, yeah. flesh and bone and everything else, he could do the same thing if he wanted to. Um, I don't know if he was allowed to, I should say. Uh, another uh, theory is the Nephilim, which we touched very briefly on. Right. Uh, they're big. We see aliens uh, depicted in ancient writings as being taller than most uh if not all people on Earth, uh, and the Nephilim were meant to be the biggest uh, of people on the Earth, or the strongest, capable of things that most people weren't, hence the reason they were called the heroes of old and men of renown. Um, and I think those two in particular are the, the only two theories I got in regards to uh, my explanation of what these ancient writings and drawings really represent. Yeah, and this might carry over into the next episode too, but there, from what I've seen, there are drawings of technologies, I guess is the best word you can describe them as, as far as almost like weapons, laser guns. There have been some depictions of UFOs or what people are thinking are UFOs. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I don't know what to think of those kinds of things. Well, again, like, just as I said, uh, in in regards to Ezekiel's vision, it is very possible that these ancient people didn't really see anything physically, but yet they were dreaming. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's where they really saw most of these visions. Instead, it ended up drawing them on the walls, kind of as a uh, reminder. You know, uh, back then, visions were a big thing, and people saw a vision, you know, they would go out and do whatever that vision said, or they would learn by these visions. Uh, yeah. God used visions all the time, uh, especially with, uh, you know, Jesus used visions uh, when it, with the disciples who became the apostles and so on and so forth, uh, Ezekiel, uh, Joshua. So many different uh, biblical characters had seen visions and did what the visions are telling them to do. And so in the same way, I think it's very possible that these other ancient civilizations – just happen to have a dream of some sort and it's very possible that a spiritual being i.e. demons um, had visited them and depicted themselves as something else you know Mm. well and most people are thinking that these drawings are the historical documentation which to agree is possible and same thing with the Bible. A lot of it is historical. A lot of it is humans' interpretations of things that they're envisioning from um, God's not talking, but his his way of talking <laughs> to people. Um, so I that could be a good possibility that these were actually just visions they were trying to interpret and not historical fact. Mm-hmm. So I I think that's a very good representation of what these might be. If we're wrong, we're wrong, but that's our opinion, folks. Don't take this as any truth other than what we we are coming to the conclusion of. All right. Um, We are getting close to the end here. Uh, I do have to, again, thank Adrian West for his music. If you want to listen to his music, download his music, look at his bio, go to adrianwest.com. You can also get a hold of us on other venues other than Blog Talk Radio. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. And you can also email us at paratruthradio.com. And uh, we always have our chat open and the guest line open. If you guys ever have any opinions whatsoever, go ahead, give us a call, 914-205-5558. That is only on during our on-air 
uh, episodes, and then uh, same as the chat as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, to kind of give a preview for UFOs and alien abductions for next week's show, uh, we've got huge amounts of more information to give you guys. Um, and then uh, Eric's got his Christian spin on things. I've got my personal views on things. And as you can tell, not at all have we argued once on each other's beliefs. And I think I can speak for Eric as well as myself that we can both respect each other's opinions. Right. And any, and anyone else's. Right. And we, for those of you who want to call them, we're too scared to. Right. We're <laughs> not going to judge you. It's not, either of our places to judge you, we will hash back and forth with you, but it's not an argument. It's we're explaining our side. We would love to hear your, um, anything else you want to add before we get going here? Nope. Not a thing till next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. My name is Justin and I'm Eric and we will see you guys next time, next week at 8 PM Eastern time on Blog Talk Radio. Peace. Progressive's number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, it's pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. The Starlight Lounge presents An Evening with the Progressive Box. Old moon, yeah. That's Hugo, tickling the ivories. He just saved by bundling home and auto with Progressive. Gonna finally buy a ring for that gal of yours, Hugo? Send her my condolences. hi oh. This next one's for you, too. There's a burglar in my heart. Thank you. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states or situations.